welcome back to my channel it's your girl code name chanel and i'm back but clearly i'm back to talk about one of my favorite shows yes y'all i'm here to talk about mary and millions and i've been wanting to make this video for like forever so i'm like why not and okay so if you're new to my channel welcome this is a finesse family welcome. and if you're a turning subscriber then you know that it's all love go ahead and hit the notification bell below if you have not go ahead and subscribe and give this video i should have did subscribe but this is because why would you this be subscribe nevertheless go ahead and subscribe give this video a thumbs up and yeah thank you guys for watching first off if you have not watched mary and millions it is on hulu it is on lifetime so hulu of course you have to pay for it lifetime is i watched the new season for free i'm gonna be talking about um oh i just look so chocolate <laughs> anyway it's on Hulu and it's on Lifetime. And I someone said it was on something else, but that's where I watch it at. Oh, and it's on Prime. It's on Prime Video too. But I think you have to pay for it on Prime. I don't think it comes with Prime, but it might. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So I didn't know if I was going to talk about every cast member on the show, but I don't think I am. I'm just going to, I feel like I'm just going to talk about my favorites. I'm about to introduce the cast members. Brie, Anna is my favorite hands down. Rosie, who's 23, that's in a relationship with Drew, who's 39. I know, I know everyone loves Rosie. Like, she went from finding him on a sugar daddy site. Oh, this is going to have spoilers on there. Rosie went from finding him on a sugar daddy site to that being her husband. And I don't think she signed a prenup, okay? We love to see it. And I keep checking this little bob. <laughs> see, they should not gave me no bob. Drew is, Drew is an owner of a landscaping company. Um, He... I'm just about to spill the tea, so there's going to be some spoilers. Drew and Rosie met on a Sugar Daddy site. Now, I don't know what Sugar Daddy site they met at because they did not say the show. First off, at the, in the um, beginning of the show, they were being super secretive on how they met. Like, super secretive. And I knew for a fact they met on a Sugar Daddy site. Like, I, I mean, it, let, let me know in the comments if you watched this show and you knew they met on a Sugar Daddy site. Like, I just freaking knew. Um, it wasn't really a secret to me. So when it was finally revealed that they met on a Sugar Daddy site, I was like, Sugar Daddy meet. He looks like a guy off of Sugar Daddy meet. He looks like a maybe SugarDaddy.com. Like, he looks like, I, in my in my opinion, like, just a theory, I think that they met on Sugar Daddy meet. SDM. That's what I think. But let me know if it was revealed. I've been Googling it. I don't see what site she used. But Rosie, we need the site, honey child. Okay? We need the site. So that's just an example when people are like, millionaires aren't on these sites. Don't listen to these girls telling y'all to go online. Like, why would a millionaire have an iPhone? Why would a millionaire have an iPad? Why would a millionaire have a MacBook and not be online on the internet? Like, y'all act like because people have millions of dollars, they're not on the internet. Like, their assistant might be on the sites for them or like, you know, somebody that works for them. But these millionaires are definitely on these sites. And it's kind of upsetting that people are trying to act like you can't find a millionaire online when everyone has some type of social network, some type of social media. Assurance for me that my millionaire husband is online okay online somewhere and oh one thing i love about rosie i love when rosie is like come through daddy drew when <laughs> y'all let me just oh, y'all so if we we're gonna get but let me just finish talking about rosie and drew since i'm on the subject because i was gonna go over to the next ones but let's just talk about rosie and drew and how rosie family and friends are haters and it kind of reminds me of like when i said in one of my videos how i said let me rewind that some friends i used to have would kind of talk down on my lifestyle or talk down on me sugaring or finessing or only dating men who are providers and generous and give me money and i'm just like to each his own, I never talk down on my friends for dating bums. I never even be like, hey, you know what? You can do better. And I may say it one time, and if they don't take, they don't heed that advice, honey, I got a whole channel. I can't be wasting my finesse game on somebody that don't want to hear it. I want to give it to y'all that want to hear it. But I feel like Rosie friends are haters. They're like, it's just little things that they're saying. I can't even remember exactly what Rosie friends were saying. Um, that she was just with him for the money and and like y'all are just with somebody because of this and y'all are just with somebody because of that like 
I don't know how Rosie put up with her hating ass friends. They wouldn't have came to her little engagement party because she threw a little party and about two or three of her friends came and about two or three of those friends were haters. And I was like, girl, you can find better friends than that, honey child. Like do better, please do better. But I will say that also Rosie family did not like him. And it's kind of interesting how people want the best for you or whatever. They say they want the best for you. But then like when you find the best, you know, for you, you feel like the best for you. And then people just become, I guess, haters. I really don't know. Let me know what y'all think about why Rosie family did not like him. Because I can't really think of it. Maybe It may be the age difference. But then again, like he's 39, she's 23, like 23. I guess that's a big age difference. They just thought that she was like, y'all, I don't know. Like I can't really think of why you wouldn't want your child to marry a provider. And who's treating her right? Brianna and Bill, my faves, okay? Absolute favorite on the show has to be Brianna. Brianna is, at the time of the filming, I think she was like 19 or 20. Because this is, I'm talking about season one. And then I will be talking about season two because season two finally has black cast members. So it has a black woman and she's dating a millionaire. And I love to see it. And also she's older. So I think it's good to like see that like an older black woman still going, like still being able to have that Cinderella story, still being able to find a provider, someone who, uh, hypergamy, someone who makes more money than her. I love to see it. But I'll be talking about season one on this video and then let me know if y'all want me to do a video on season two so old hostess she met bill at a restaurant in dallas she's from dallas and bill is 60 years old and he's like a owner of dunhill enterprise if, I, if i'm not mistaken but he's like filthy rich so he met her and retired her from her hostess job like that okay one reason why i love brianna y'all i have to give it to her like she is very feminine. She's very submissive. I, I love how she talks. I love how she acts like she cares and maybe she does care. But y'all, I think in my humble opinion is she got the game on lock. Like she, to me, if you're looking at the screen on Mary and Millions, it seems like she's into him more than he's into her. And when you're in a sugar and relationship or that's her boyfriend, that's her boyfriend. <laughs> that's her boyfriend. Whatever. That's her boyfriend. But when you're in those type of relationships, you want the older guy to just think that you're so into him and that and her emotions, how how she's like, she cries. And, I said, what a finesse queen. Like, I don't know. She just she's just a finesse queen to me. I just love to see it. I honestly Everything that she does, it seems so calculated, but people think that it's out of her emotions. And I'm just like, no, I've been there. I put on that act, I put on that show, I put on those tears. Another thing that I find interesting about um, Brianna's situation is a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, you if you wanna attract wealthy men, you have to have this and have that and have that. And it was true, you should have, we should have our, stuff together we should be secure in our life and you know be able to fund our own lifestyle but at the same time then you have girls and women not only her meet wealthy men at their jobs being waitresses being bartenders um working in strip clubs you know i actually know two in dallas who i've met millionaires working at strip clubs dgs and onyx okay so it's just like you just never know. I feel like a lot of people think certain things are set in stone and certain things are done. Make the exception, the rule, but I will say that you don't have to be a millionaire to attract a millionaire and millionaires aren't looking, millionaire men aren't looking for other millionaires. When they're looking in spouses, I don't think they're looking for other millionaires. Example, Brianna and Bill, and he is 40 years older than her. Her family seems okay with it. And I think that her family seems okay with it because Unlike Rosie's family, her family doesn't, she comes from very humble beginnings. I don't think they have that much money. And I also think that, you know, her mom is happy that she's dating up, you know, that she's able to provide her with this lifestyle. But also her mom don't take no mess from them either. And season two, I'm not even gonna get into season two because I'm not gonna spoil season two. But yes, I, I loved it. I love to see it. Sean and Megan, they, Megan is my second favorite because 
When she said she wasn't signing that prenup, she said she wasn't signing that prenup, okay? Anybody in the comments was like, did y'all think that Megan was gonna give in to signing the prenup? Because honestly, at the bottom of my heart, I knew she wasn't, but my best friend was like, I think she's gonna sign the prenup. I said, girl, no. No, she's literally like, why would I sign a prenup? That's like just making, setting ourselves up for failure. That's the saying that we think that our marriage is gonna fail. Like, I just love the way she finessed that prenup, honey child. Megan is the only one out of those three that have a kid with the guy. So she had a kid with him. They were together for five years. She actually interviewed at his job. He came, I mean, at a company he owned. He did not show up to the interview or he came late to the interview. Interview She left and somehow he asked her on a date. Y'all gotta watch the show. But I think that it's really interesting. Like she came to him jobless, like let me get a job. And now she got a whole millionaire husband. We love to see it. But they did end up dating. They were together for five years and his family was so, his dad. No, it's really his dad that was really like, she needs to sign the prenup because he's been through a divorce before where his ex took his all his money. I, I really don't know the situation. Um, Cause his dad kind of talks about it, but then it's like, they're acting like it's a, a subject they don't want to bring up. But I feel like the dad really wanted him to get that prenup sign. I think that he thought Meg, Megan is like the biggest gold digger. Again, another example of humble beginning. She even said it herself, her and her family, like they don't have much money. Honestly, neither now, neither none of these women. Now, neither none of these women got money like that. So it's just so interesting how people try to expect this, especially from black women, like, oh yeah, you shouldn't date a guy for money or a guy for money is not gonna want you. Listen, I'm reading this book right now. It's called The Ritual Marry Somebody, Why Not You? And honey child, manifestation. Man I've already manifested so much in my life that <laughs> the sky is the limit, honey child. The sky's the limit. Megan is in love with Sean. He's also a millionaire. I honestly think they're they're in love. They have a kid together. They've been together for five years. I don't, I feel like he did not want to sign the prenup either. I feel like he just wanted to do anything to make her happy. And I really like submissive, gullible guys like him. Like that's who I need. I need me a Sean, period. Like I need me a Sean, period. Because I need someone that's going to be like, Listen, I just want to do what makes you happy. Like, period. Couples aren't the only couples on Marrying Millions, but the other couples are toxic. We have a woman who is dating a younger guy um, and she's a millionaire. Another woman who's a millionaire dating a guy with no job or no type of career path and lives with his parents. And then we have the other couple who gave his uh gave his girlfriend the cubic zirconium what what the lady say it's cubic zirconium <laughs> so i didn't really want to talk about them i really wanted to talk about the three main cast members that i um enjoy watching i literally skipped past all the other couples and then i'm really upset at um brian and gtel to season two like that doesn't it, to me that don't even make any sense like why are y'all bringing them back when it, it are they dating? Like, I just don't get it. They're, if anything, I'm sad that Rosie is not coming back on season two. And I'm sad that, um, that Megan is not coming back on season two. Like, that really sucks. But as far as the other couples that, you know, whatever. But yeah, I think it's extremely important to manifest the life that you want to live. I always, I surround myself with movies, books. If you're on my Patreon where I give out my game, Y'all, my, my Patreon will be in my description box. There are girls getting allowances, getting money, getting cars. Okay, we love to see it. But I literally only surround my life with people who are trying to better their lives. Better books, better movies, better shows. Mary and Millions is one of the shows that I can watch over and over because I'm like picking up little game from everybody. And the Brianna and Bill are in Dallas and he lives in Highland Park, which is a really wealthy area in Dallas. And that's one of the areas that I'm trying to move to. So um, I'm just surrounding myself around like the right. I don't like surrounding myself around negativity. I don't like following negative people on social media. I like to be around things that are gonna make me better, be around things that are gonna help my vision. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Y'all comment y'all thoughts and opinions on Marion Million season one. 
Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think you can learn from the girls. Tell me who's your favorite. Like I said, Brianna's my favorite, but runner up is Megan. And then there's Rosie. Don't forget to follow me on social media, codename Chanel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell below. So when I pop out my videos, it'll pop up on your screen. And I think that I'm out. And I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, don't forget to sign up for my Patreon.